Hi, and welcome to HTTP3 in curl, the 2020 edition. I did a similar talk in, well, at curlapp 2019, and I was going to do this talk at curlapp 2020, but, well, due to circumstances, I'm doing this recorded version instead. I also did another HTTP3 talk in curl, uh, I think it was late 2019 at the, at the first talk on presentation here. But this is the extended um, into curl details version. So uh, this is what I ten, um, what I intend to talk about today. Um, here it is. Well, first, of course, I am Daniel Stenberg. I am, this is my site. I'm Bagger on Twitter. I play with curl uh, at work and for fun and uh, everything. You can buy commercial curl support from me. I work for Wolf SSL. So today I want I'm going to make a short recap exactly, you know, what's the difference, what's HTTP 3 really, and, uh, how it differs. It's not going to be an in depth, but I'm going to sort of just remind you uh, and describe how we build curl to enable it. A little dive into the TLS situation, exactly why this is a TLS, uh, and what the problem, or sort of what the challenge, and, and what we need to do what someone needs to do with the TLS libraries for this to work properly, then how we, how we actually use HTTP3 with a curl tool today. And then, of course, the same thing with libcurl, some of the remaining issues, uh, and, uh, and sort of the state of, of uh, HTTP3 in curl right now, and when, a little bit of a, just a run through, when we might be able to see this in curl in a release or or not so follow along and uh, we'll get to the bottom of this but just want to emphasize that this is not my HTTP 3 explanation talk and um, uh, the, the image you can see here on this um, is a photo of when I did an HTTP 3 for everyone talk at FOSTEM 2020 and uh, if you go to this URL on the side uh, on the slide here you can find my talks you can find this talk and other HTTP 3 talks like that which might go more into details about the particular protocol quick and HP3. I'm just going to do a, a conden very condensed version of that today and then go into the details um, on curl around it more than talking about the protocol. So first HTTP3 is a protocol based on quick. Quick is a new transport protocol instead of TCP and TLS basically. So quick is an improvement then to TCP and TLS. So it fixes the TCP head of line blocking problem, which allows us to do many streams over a single connection without one of the, without packet loss affecting all the other streams basically. So we can have a packet loss situation, one connection, but do many streams and will um, not block the other streams when one of the streams lose packets. We get faster handshakes, much fast, faster to uh, very often actually, a zero RTT, one RTT handshakes from, uh, I mean, up to completely secure um, connection, which is quite a few <laughs> less than TCP TLS, which has uh, well three, four, five, a lot of round trips um, and, and packages back and forth before it has a connection. You can, we can then possibly well, this hasn't really been proven yet, but uh, ideally we should be able to send the data earlier and more reliably than we can with TCP and TLS, especially since the TCP is TCP fast open, which allows early data is uh, really hard to use and isn't really used in, in the wild. Quick is always encrypted. There's no clear text version and uh, more of, of a connection in Quick is encrypted than with a TCP TLS situation. The, the idea then being that with more encryption and hiding more of the goings on for, for all the middle boxes and everything else in between, uh, we hide more of the traffic and therefore we should be able to develop this protocol more in the future because uh, fewer devices and, and uh, network equipments and, every and everything can th then ossificate and, and sort of assume that this is the way it's going to keep on in the future and then hinder uh, future development because of that. So Quick is built on top of UDP, so it doesn't replace UDP or TCP really. Well, it does, 
but it, in the protocol stack, it's built upon UDP. So UDP, TCP and UDP remain the ones basically because those are the ones that those are the protocols your Wi-Fi router at home. They it that's the protocols it can NAT and translate and handle. So we can't really introduce any new ones there without a major hurdle. And Quick basically uses UDP as if it is IP, basically a packet transport layer. And then the rest of Quick is a reliable transport protocol. Basically, I say basically a lot. Uh, it's a TCP replacement in user space. Well, include and then it also includes TLS. So it's a rewritten TCP in TLS done over UDP. And this replacement has streams in the transport protocol. So Quick provides streams, and that means that there are many logical flows within a single connection, pretty much like HTTP2 added, what HTTP2 added for um, compared to HTTP1. So, and it's it's a concept that exists in other protocols. SSH has it, and the SCTP has it. So you set up one connection, but you can do many individual streams within that single connection. <coughs> Right, so HTTP2 added that, but that was in the application layer. Now it's the um, transport layer that introduces this. And the streams are independent, which means that they're, they're individually they are, you know, ordered, reliable, and uh, you can rely on each stream is basically like a tiny TCP connection. And, but w they're independent, which means that one of the streams may lose a packet and get slowed down, for example, but the other streams will go on. So you may un end up in a situation where stream one is started before stream two, and if, but the other, if you get packet loss, one of the streams may be held back while the other stream can continue. And well, you know, more than two, of course. <coughs> That's just a sort of a very short, brief, condensed summary of some of the quick things that is introduced in the protocol quick and then HTTP3 is the HTTP protocol done over this new trans transport protocol. So HTTP3 is HTTP done over quick. Here's the of, uh, official logo for HTTP3. So then to, to, to sum it up, uh, to, to, to describe this the best way, I, I like a picture so I've done this comparison of the old this is the traditional HTTP 1, HTTP 2 stacks on, on the left side here. This is how we do it. IP, TCP on top of that, TLS, and then HTTP 1. And then we introduce HTTP 2, but it's still in the same call of same hierarchy here. Uh, but going into an HTTP 3 world, we no longer do a TCP. We have UDP there, and we put quick over that, on top of that. And as you can see here, we have TLS 1.3 here, as compared to TLS 1.2 in the other side. So Quick uses TLS 1.3 uh, built in, and I'll get back to that because it's not exactly the way we do TLS on the left side because it's slightly different on the right side, but it's still TLS 1.3, and then we add HTTP 3 on top of that. And oh, here's the little subtle detail I mentioned before, the streams they were in the HTTP2 layer, but they're now moved down into the transport layer. So now they're done by Quick and not by HTTP3. And of course, for an HTTP3 only user, <coughs> such as curl, as, as is curl doesn't really care about Quick, we care about HTTP3 uh, in the same way that we don't really care about TCP, we care about the transport protocols. So for us, maybe it, it won't matter, but for, for the world, it will matter because we can do other protocols on top of Quick that then automatically will get streams in the same way that we have streams uh, for HTTP3. So okay, that's here's just the that's the well sort of the here's this is the mindset. Uh, this is the s view of the stacks that I want you to have in your head when we continue down this road because the fact that this is UDP and Quick underneath HTTP 3 is going to affect everything, right? HTTPS is TCP, or is it? So there's an entire world, right, where we use HTTPS colon slash slash URLs everywhere. And if you do that in a, <coughs> in a browser or a regular uh, web client, that 
implies that they go to TCP port 443 by default and that's a t TCP and TLS uh, on that port and then negotiate that and make a handshake and do a request and possibly something you know get data or send data or whatever but <coughs> in a world where we're talking HTTP 3 we might not want to do this TCP right so it's since again the, the the new protocol stack is based on UDP and quick not TCP and TLS like this so how do we get to the HTTPS colon slash slash of the future when we're talking HTTP 3 mm. of course the answer to this is this header and sir um, way of doing things that was introduced already before HTTP 3 so this isn't a new header it already existed before actually it's called alt service or alternate services or whatever is the RFC says it's a separate RFC it's a header that basically uh, says exactly what this image here says it's a big hand right over there is our service now for this many seconds into the future on another host another protocol another port number is the same origin or origin you know being the the web language language for basics is saying the exact same host and service so pretty much this you talk to one server and the server says oh i'm also available over here possibly with another protocol and and, and uh, protocol and, uh, and everything else like that and we i will also be available there um, for this many seconds into the future so uh, we need a first to connect to an old server that says oh you can go http3 me over here for the next year week hour hopefully the, that um, time frame will be rather long so that we don't have to go back and refresh this but anyway we need this extra round trip right so we need to get that information from the original origin you know the, the original server that says i'm also available over here um which is a unfortunate round trip but of course in a browser world they will do this upgrade transparently in the background so they we won't really notice that extra round trip but in a curl world we can't do that I in a background so we have to get a first request save the information the knowledge about where the http server where it is or how and for how long and then go over there i'll get back to how there were also a lot of challenges with with, with um, enabling http3 globally or i mean running servers on the internet right now for example a lot of the connections fail with just simply because um, udp is often blocked uh, or um, i mean just uh, bandwidth limited or capped somehow in, in different uh, environments so all clients need fallback algorithms in case of failure of course we pretty much need fallbacks anyway when we have this old service method but still we we're still looking at a fairly high uh, failure frequency frequency and it's still looking at these numbers uh, the some of the some of the reports uh, indicate even much higher failure rates than seven percent so we'll see we need fallback algorithms it's very cpu intensive for now we're talking uh, in some numbers have said two to three the p cpu performance for the same amount of bandwidth um, in the in server side but we're also seeing a lot of m f uh, interesting posts even recently i think i've seen posts from fastly and cloudflare showing that it is possible to build the uh, quick and HTTP 3 servers that uh, are at least almost as fast as a TCP TLS server right now and this is going to improve over time when we get better optimized UDP stacks and we get better UDP APIs which aren't really made that well for, for high-speed transfers and we get better hardware offloading which which is something we don't have right now because the hardware offloading for for the crypto stuff isn't possible to do the same way because the TLS handling is different in in quick than and then before 
Uh, so yeah, and so there's a funny TLS layer. I'll, I'll ha I have a separate slide I'll show you. So the funny TLS layer is also making it harder for us to deploy this because th that all TLS libraries need adjustments and the TLS libraries then will have to ship in new distros and new versions and have to APIs and we have to use these new APIs and so on. All quick stacks are user land, which then makes it also, uh, I it's not necessarily a challenge, it's also a, a benefit, right? Because it's easier to uh, iterate and upgrade both ends in when you play around, so it's also a blessing. But this combined with the fact that there's no quick API really makes all users so quick today. We have to marry one of these libraries and stick to that and hope that this is going to work. And it's going to be, uh, well, not a lot of work perhaps, but at least work to switch between them and uh, not necessarily easy. The user land part, of course, also comes with the fact that everything, th this uses TLS and everything, and, and uh, moving this into kernels while possible, I think, is going to take a long time until someone wants to, to do that for real. I mean, you can always do, the I, and, and I know there are experiments of doing this and playing with it and trying, so if you uh, happen to be a big player, you can work on it for your own deployments, but until, I don't think we'll see it in a, in the, you know, in the default kernel anywhere uh, at any time soon. And there's the slight lack of tooling. Sure, you can do Wireshark and you should use, there are also a, a excellent effort to do common logging for Quick and HTTP3 called Qlog. So there are tools and there are tools coming more and more, but we're certainly in the beginning of this. So we are not used to these new tools and that we'd actually have to use tool for everything since everything is encrypted. So we need uh, we need help to to view the traffic much more than we did before, right? But we could at least view TCP to some extent without tools. <coughs> Even though, of course, we've we've come accustomed to TLS and HTTPS, so we need ways to decrypt anyway. And when will this ship? Mm, yeah, it's impossible to tell. Uh, and I'm an uh, eternal optimist, so I keep saying dates that just pass over time. So I've, s I've talked about HTTP 3 a lot of times and I sort of updated my ship <laughs> date prognosis uh, basically every other month. But hopefully it'll be done uh, by in within 2020 and hopefully then, I don't I'm not sure that it will then ship within the year, but hopefully it'll get done so they'll or get into this last call phase that it, that what it's called in, what in the IETF. So with a little bit of luck, we will manage that, and maybe then we'll have a, um, an established uh, protocol set um, by 2021. But, but I don't know this, and um, um, we I can't really tell if it's if it's feasible or not. We'll just have to sit back and and see where we're going. Uh, what is what is certainly true is that the the rate of changes and the amount of sort of um, big uh, revolutionary uh, uh, modifications of the specs has certainly slowed down. So over the last few iterations of the, of the drafts of the specification, the changes have gradually shrunk. So it appears as if we are approaching a point where, where this is going to be possible to actually ship it. <coughs> but again, I'm an optimist. So I've, I've actually said this before. So uh, I, I'm, I'm also maybe 2022 then it will happen at some point <laughs> we just don't know when, know when so okay that was h that was quick and http 3 being a protocol over quick and of course curl runs in all your devices so we want curl to be able to talk this new protocol because this new protocol is going to come it's going to affect how we do things on the web on the internet and curl being a big sort of portion of that we want to make sure that it also plays HTTP 3 uh, and, and can be able to do whatever all the browsers can do with HTTP 3 so we're still work in progress here um, the, the support for HTTP 3 is marked as experimental in curl so you need to enable it explicitly we reserve the right to actually change ABI and API behavior when it comes to HTTP 3 stuff. And uh, <coughs> yeah, your your help is certainly appreciated. 
I I uh, I've been um, pushing out so that sort of make made sure that and I almost certainly haven't been alone but <coughs> I've tried to make sure that we can have landed HP3 support so that we can actually start using it and then we can start playing with it and with the thinking that when servers are uh, coming as they are and we have curl going with HTTP 3 we can sort of you know use curl to try out your new servers and the ser and we can then also make sure that curl actually works by trying out these new servers and so uh, you know hand in hand go forward and as always use curl as that uh, Swiss army knife how the internet transfers even in HTTP 3 so the code is there it's in git master it's shipped to the releases so there's no special branch for this it's all in master you just have to enable it in your build and when you enable it you can use it of course in curl we only expose HTTP 3 not quick and that is in the same manner as we don't expose TCP or TLS when we talk about HTTP 2 or HTTP 1 because with curl of course we talk about URLs and internet transfers and with internet transfers we basically talk about HTTPS right so we talk about HTTPS and we enable HTTP 3 for HTTPS just wanted to throw it in there so it's not going to be a generic quick thing for curl there might be other protocols going to uh, going to be done over quick in the future and then if other protocols that we support go that route we will of course support or attempt to support those protocols as well in, in the quick version but so far HTTP 3 is the only one over quick so HTTP 3 is the only quick protocol we, s we support so to build HTTP 3 support in the curl that's actually um, I shouldn't probably I should probably shouldn't say easy but I think it is easy so you it is here to then to support what I mentioned just get everything going so we need third-party libraries for the actual binary parts of the HTTP 3 stuff exactly like we did it for HTTP 2 and in our case now we have a selectable backend we don't have that for HTTP 2 but we have it for HTTP 3 so you can actually pick one of two different backends um, I wouldn't be surprised if we if this sticks so that we stick around with two backends uh, for the f going further as I think it's turned out pretty useful right now because it verify because they are two diff these quiche and mgtcp2 are two very different libraries and it has helped us to verify that our um, code base and, and assumptions are good and it has I think it has helped uh, them to verify that their APIs and, and stuff work because of course they write clients as well because they're you know they want to make sure that their stuff works so they have that too but <coughs> still I wouldn't be surprised if we would add more backends in the future I, I wouldn't be against it I'm not I haven't found any particular contender right now yet there are a few others that could be but uh, <coughs> there's also a big effort to make it happen so maybe not we'll see if one of them would for for some reason drop out of the race we could easily just drop it uh, and uh, stick to the other that that sticks early days as i said we haven't promised anything in the abi or api so let's stick to this these two different uh, libraries they have different tls requirements and i'll get back to that they certainly have very different apis so they work very differently um, which I think also is a good idea because then we can try out two di very different approaches and see which one goes. So one of these third party dependent uh, third party HTTP3 libraries is Quiche. And Quiche is actually then a quick and HTTP3 library. Th it's made by people at Cloudflare. So the code is uh, in this uh, URL. It is using boring SSL primarily for the TLS layer and uh, you can build it as <coughs> the instructions in this file in docshp3.md there's a complete instruction actually how to build curl with quiche so you can see build quiche first then build curl to use that quiche quiche is written in in uh, rust so you need to have that set up but still that's not c too complicated either 
Um, and when you enable quiche and HP3 in general, you want alt service support added. And uh, you want that, of course, because that is the way we st standard wise upgrade HP3. The alternative option, then, if you don't go with quiche, is to use the NGTCP2. And NGTCP2 is a, is a, f is a fun name, but it's also. Uh, it's the NGTCP2 is the quick library and it uses the NGHP3 as the HTTP3 library, so it's actually split up in two, right? So you need both of these libraries. They're available there uh, on, on GitHub. So you need to build them both, install them both, and, and run with it. And when you use this one, or actually it's the NGTCP2 then that uses TLS, because that's the quick library, and it uses a patched OpenSSL or GNU TLS from Git right now. Uh, which and, and the patched version, I'll get back to why it's patched and, and when they host the patched code themselves. So it's pretty easy if you just follow the docs in, in our file here, the docs hp3.md again, you, you can see how to build with either OpenSSL or GNU TLS, your choice and then um, and right, and you want to enable alt service support even for this because you want, you will want alt service support with HP3 to to get that upgrade, that nice upgrade path. And just then a little detail here because I get this question a lot, which is not really a question for me. It's a question for the NGTCP2 team, but I wanted to throw in this nugget anyway. So Jana, who's uh, one of the quick, well. I, I don't think he's credited as founder of Quick, but he's certainly one of the ones who started working on Quick very early on, and he's been working, working on it furiously since then. And he worked at Google, and before he's at Fastly now. But he and he did a Quick presentation in 2016 at HP Workshop, and I was there. And then he <laughs> he showed he talked about Quick and how uh, all the new things and and why it's called quick and he certainly and he, and he emphasized that it certainly should not be called tcp2 and it actually showed this exact uh, image uh, and of course this is really you know uh, it's uh, in jest but still so uh, the ngtcp2 guys of course thought it was really fun to then call it to use the name tcp2 in the name and they used the they're the same team that made NGHTP2, so I guess the NG is their thing, really. They called NG, NG library. Anyway, <coughs> that's a, what was a little bit of a parenthesis. Um, back to the TLS situation. So we introduced Quick as a new transport protocol, and it includes TLS, right? But mm, yeah, uh, you mentioned you, you remember how I showed a little TLS 1.3 box within the quick box. So it's TLS 1.3, but TLS, <coughs> TLS was made for TCP. So it, it means something. It was m designed to work on top of TCP. And TLS sends records of, of um, well, they're called TLS records, and each record contains individual messages. I'm not a TLS expert enough to tell you exactly why it, it came to be like that. But anyway, when when they designed the TLS team or the crypto team or the whoever did it in the in the quick um, design process, they decided to just use the messages to cut out the records because the TCP r the the records used for TLS over TCP were basically just there for because it is done over TCP. So you don't have to use them when you don't do TCP. So throughout the records only go with the messages. And what, why is that, uh, why is that a uh, concern for us? Well, no TLS library around at the time supported TLS messages, or it does they don't support sort of direct access to TLS me messages. They were all talking about, talking in terms of records data, and they put it down in records and containing messages. So basically, this means that all TLS libraries at that time had to get new APIs to support these new things. And there are also additional secrets that don't normal TLS, well, I wouldn't say, I shouldn't say normal, but uh, TLS libraries from that were done without concern for quick. They 
also lacks a, a few APIs to export secrets from the handshakes. Meaning we have to get updated TLS libraries. So just to illustrate then, records containing individual messages, it basically means like this. So when, when, it, when you send TLS over TCP, you send frame zero and then you send frame one. And as you can see here, frame zero contains two messages and frame one contains two messages. So and this is how they're built on over TCP. But when we do it over quick, we don't have those frames. We just send the messages. So there are no frames here, just messages. Kind of cut out a, a layer of data. And that's the, the cutting out of that, which isn't uh, provided by so many TLS libraries. So among the TLS libraries then is a um, start out there here. I'm going to talk about three different TLS libraries to start with. And Boring SSL, of course, is a uh, library uh, done by Google. It supports Quick already. It already has Quick APIs, possibly because Google is one of the drivers, of course, of Quick, and they're pretty much the, the same person. The persons working on Quick are very close to the TLS uh, team, I guess, or ha they have an overlap of people, so they have um, modified their TLS library already. Uh, right, so, um, and Quiche, um, the Quiche library using Boring SSL, and uh, a lot of others use Boring SSL as well. So when when you work on, on uh, Quake, you of course have to decide which uh, TLS library to work with, because you have to work with one that supports Quick properly. So this is, um, one of them, them and uh, a bunch of the different solutions have have went with that. OpenSSL in turn, OpenSSL has no support for the Quick at all in in any release and not in in Git either. And <coughs> their their plan is to get the Quick support done after the three the, the pending 3.0 release is done, which they say is uh, coming in early Q4. Mm, so it's pretty far away, and I know a lot of a lot of people have been a, a little bit disappointed that they're not faster or or more keen uh, on on fixing quick for for OpenSSL. But now this is this is the reality, and there's a PR called 8797 pull request in GitHub for OpenSSL that provides an API to OpenSSL that is very similar to the Boring SSL one that introduces these. Uh, the missing quick pieces, basically. So that's the uh, yeah, that's the URL for the pull request, and uh, NGTCP then uses that uh, pull request basically, or a, an a OpenSSL version with that pull request applied. And so does a bunch of other projects like MS Quick and Node.js and so on when they build their quick libraries on uh, on Linux, for example. <coughs> um, Right, and then there's GNU TLS, which is um, one of the major or, or more feature complete libraries also, and they have land initial support for Quick in Git. So it, I don't think it's provided in any release yet, but if you build then NGTCP2 using GNU TLS from Git, you can make NGTCP2 use GNU TLS instead. And as such, you can then use NGTCP2 exactly like you would with any other, with, with the OpenSSL choice. And for most other TLS libraries that curl supports, there's no support for Quick yet. So, so yeah, curl supports, what, 13 different TLS libraries. So we, s and I mentioned three of them now, then, and those three are the only ones with, well, in BoringSSL, a complete support <coughs> they don't re do releases, so they're basically from in Git already. In, in GNU TLS, the support is there in, in Git, and for OpenSSL, the support is there uh, patched in a pull request, possibly in in, uh, in a release sometime late this year. P I would guess more like early next year. And no other TLS libraries are really uh, uh, there yet with in, with in the terms of Quick. And when you build curl, you use the same TLS library for the quick part as for other TLS things. So 
you would really want to make sure that you build curl with that TLS library you want to use, which is is really that's that's uh, what should I say one of the more complicated things when you want to build curl with HP three support. Now you want to build with one of those three libraries, but that that library that you go with will also then be used for for the rest of curl for all the regular HTTP and uh, other HTTPS stuff and so on. I should also mention that <coughs> I know that the the Kish library has also tried to use OpenSSL with that pull request patch. So since it the the API is so similar to the boring SSL one. So <coughs> hopefully going forward the the open SSL route and the boring SSL route will look the same to the quick library so you could pick and choose either of them we'll see if that sticks so once you've built curl to support http 3 you want to use it and again as we as we did with http 2 we want to we want to keep the http HP headers and everything to look like HTTP headers th the way you're accustomed to you know name colon content and it looks like they still look like they did with HTTP 1 and HTTP 2 because we have a translation layer so we make them look like the same header as before and that is convenient because then everything works the same way so when when you want to run curl to speak HTTP 3 we added a new option called dash dash HTTP 3 and this is a bit special because it forces you to go with quick and HTTP 3 on that given hostname immediately without knowing anything about it you just say go assume that this is quick I know better I know that it is go go use it and then it has no fallback so if you point it to the wrong host it'll just you know not connect and, and not get anything and you get an error back uh, <coughs> while the proper upgrade path method is to use the old service option which is it is actually separate from HTTP 3, but it's also combined. So you want to use old service and it saves the cache in this given file name. So you want to <coughs> then ask the server, do you have an alternative service? And do that, does that alternative ser service support HTTP 3? So you do that in the first round and you save it in the cache. And in the next round, if you use that cache and you find a uh, curl finds a match, it can go to the HTTP 3 server instead of the to be one or two server and and uh, right now among the test servers I have a URL somewhere f with a list of test servers or you can google for it it should be three test servers uh, some of those test servers they actually don't provide an old service res header response so you can't upgrade this way and then you need the dash dash to be three uh, option to, to trick uh, or to tell curl to use HTTP 3 directly of course this old service needs an additional round trip then because you have to go to one server get the response back and that tells you that you should go somewhere else to get HP 3 and in general upgrading to HP 3 is more sort of difficult because of that fact because you can't reuse the same connection when we upgraded from HP 1 to HP 2 we could use the same connection and just negotiate the next protocol and uh, that was easy and you could stick to the same protocol um, stick to the same connection for HPS that is uh, while in this case we it's never the same connection so it's a, another round trip um, and of course it, it can upgrade from either HP 1 or HTTP 2 it doesn't really matter for curl it can do it both both ways and th the <coughs> the old service cache file that we save uh, we've documented on this URL it's I try to make it a little bit in in the same spirit as cookies and it's used similar to that so it's one line per per alternative service basically from this host to this host from that protocol to that protocol from that source port number uh, from one port number to another port number so um it has pr it's it still works uh, with um <laughs> for the for the tests i've done but it will see we might have a reason also to tweak that a little bit going forward <coughs> so this is how it looks like when you run curl then you use for example dash dash it be three here's a, a test server quick.tech i believe this is the the quiche test server cloudflare 
and then you'll get the response back exactly like you did in, in, in with other HTTP 3 versions <laughs> other HTTP, HTTP versions so <coughs> and if or if you want to do this you ask for a service from that uh, server and and then it m th of course the first time you access this it will never go HTTP 3 you will get the service back but if the next time you might go to HTTP 3 if that server supported and told you in the old service header and of course if you do uh, dash dash version the features will include uh, it will include include all service if the curl s tool supports all service and it's, it will include HTTP 3 if it supports the HTTP 3 feature and then that's it basically that and then things should work just like the way you used to so what works right now with HTTP 3 in curl of course first I want to emphasize that that um, the HTTP 3 specification of course is a series of drafts we're at draft number 27 right now there's going to be a 28 soon but right now we s curl works with draft 27 and and both backends it works with they are both at working with draft 27 and ri uh, all pretty much all existing test servers that we we know of and, and the play with they're all at draft 27 so we're at 27 you can do connect you can connect with curl over ipv4 and ipv6 and they happy eyeballs properly which means that they try both uh, address families as in parallel um, and it works and uh, actually I fixed a bug with it yesterday but still the it should work and it should be happy uh, you can do direct then and via the alt service header as I showed you just now it works fine you can do these funny host name DNS tricks you know dash dash resolve and other um, fancy options to how where to connect we can do get and post I'm pretty sure we can do put as well but uh, I don't think we don't have any servers around that we can try put on we can do header parsing adding removing headers so we can do pretty much most of the standard ordinary requests and operations we support cookies connection caching we do connection reuse if you do multiple URLs multiple HTTP 3 URLs on the same command line for example we support HTTP no sorry SSL keylog file for uh, uh, for if you want to Wireshark the quick connection for example you can use this environment variable to get the, the secrets out and you can Wireshark it and if you use a, a modern Wireshark preferably very recent you can uh, analyze very recent quick versions too because the Wireshark guys are really on top of things here so go with the latest Wireshark if you're on Windows you can actually download very recent daily builds if you're on uh, Linux I think you should get it from git and, and uh, build your own so a lot of things work with HTTP 3 and we have HTTP 3 builds in the curl CI so we verify that the curl builds with HTTP 3 support in every commit and PR we actually build for both Kish and TCP and NGTCP2 but we only build we don't actually run any tests because we don't have any tests and um, I didn't want to make them um, use the um, the live uh, il servers at least not yet maybe I should that to just to do some very basic ping but mm, still <coughs> so libcurl you can do the same things as with uh, curl with libcurl basically right because curl is powered by libcurl so everything I mentioned here is working with libcurl and of course we have a few more knobs and, and the thing uh, ways to tweak operation with libcurl but if you want to make a connection and you want to force it or, or make a request and want to force it to be HTTP 3 so here's a little example here's one of you know uh, one of the most basic or simple libcurl programs you can write it gets a, a resource from example.com and you just s in, in this case you explicitly say I want this to use HTTP 3 HTTP version 3 there's no fallback and it'll try this and it'll error if it fails mm, if it works it'll get the, uh, that resource from an HP 3 server or you can do it old service style and then you um, 
as I mentioned with the command line tool, you, <coughs> you give it a file name to the old service cache, you tell it which protocol versions that is okay to switch to, basically what alternatives to use or opt to use if they exist in that cache, and then you go and you get a, then it might upgrade or it might update the cache um, in the request. And of course, to know if you if you support this in your libcurl, you can use this um, curl version info function and ask for, hey, what's supported in this curl version? And it'll respond with these bits set if they have the support for them, uh, the bit for uh, version HTTP3 or the bit for old service. And then you know that the service is built in. <coughs> so there are a few issues remaining still in curl, of course, and here are some of the things that we still don't do properly for HTTP 3 in curl. So we don't have any fallback uh, for anything. So I, I mentioned this direct option, so we can go directly to HTTP 3 and it doesn't fall back because if you turn it directly, there's nothing to fall back to, possibly. Um, but we also don't have any fallback for the old service <coughs> approach, which is probably the worst because um, as I said, a lot of quick connections will fail, so we need fallback. So we need a way to try a, a quick connection and go back to the safer non-quick or possibly another or, uh, alternative so service. We don't have proper support for multiplexing uh, because I haven't worked on it enough. Also because uh, when I started digging into that, we were missing API support in both backends actually. That pre that basically told us if w if a connection is full uh, full of streams basically when do when do we create a new connection to get new streams on but we need to add that and, and work on that we don't have support properly for specifying certificates which certificates to use in the quick connections and you know override them and so on all those uh, fancy things that we have for HTTPS for, for other HTTP versions we don't have that streamlined yet we don't have support for push in quick and HTTP 3. We don't have support for HTTP trailers, and we certainly have not really uh, achieved the stability we want. There, there's a bug report in in Git uh, in GitHub right now that says that it that might hang at times when used. So I haven't been able to report that, but I think it's a sign of lacking of stability that we haven't really tested it enough. We don't have enough users fiddling with it, so we, <coughs> yeah, there's polish to be done. And we don't have any tests in the test suite for HTTP 3, which is unfortunate, which makes us do regressions without noticing. Uh, and we really need to do add tests, but adding tests, of course, make forces us to make a decision on how to do tests. And we probably want to do them by adding, uh, I would say that we want a um, HTTP 3 to HTTP 1 proxy, but I um, I don't know. Um, uh, so if we certainly need volunteers to help out there, and we don't have QLog support yet. There's a PR going right now about adding QLog support uh, with the quiche backend at least that makes us uh <coughs> makes then curl support to the new environment variable that basically says please QLog if this variable is set when you run and then we log QLog and QLog is uh, that common logging format for uh, quick in HTTP 3 endpoints really so you could basically uh, you and if you're mm, if you cooperate with the server side you can ask them to QLog their server side and you can and then there are tools and everything to visualize the the traffic which is a uh, is a more of a higher level thing than doing Wireshark because you could get more details out of it so we're going there and so hopefully we'll get the, the key support for QLog soon. That's cool. So a lot of places to jump in and help us out, as you can see, still early days. <coughs> and people have asked me then, how, how do I foresee that we upgrade to HTTP 3 with curl more long term? How will we do this? And of course, it is really tricky. People are sometimes talking about the post TCP worlds and how do you then upgrade to to um, HTTP 3 if you don't have TCP to do that initial request. And 
I forgot to mention about it now, but there's also a, a, a work on, um, well, first, HTTP2 uses HTTP2 reuses the same connection, so that's really easy. And so that was that was we can't really do it that way. But all service needs a cache on disk to be effective. And curl as a command line tool and as library, we don't store things on disk without the user's permission, right? So going upgrading to HTTP3 long term is really complicated if we if we're going to follow the standard way to do it, the old service way to do it. Of course, there there's always this opportunity to do go completely happy eyeballs in. In that I mean, just try it out, right? In parallel with a regular TCP TLS connection, try out the HTTP 3 quick connection at the same time and go with the one that works. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that some browsers will go with that more or less at least. There's also DNS record effort coming, um, which then might be the DNS version of the old service header. So we can look up in, in DNS, is this server supposed to provide, uh, is this is there an HTTP 3 server for this server? Um, so maybe that will be the better way to go HTTP 3. The I'm sure that we, we will we need to keep monitoring how to do this and how the browsers do this and so that we can make the proper decision going forward. It was easy to at one point in time say that we will prefer HTTP 2 for HTTPS connections and, and always try to upgrade to that. But it's much more difficult to to do that with HTTP 3 since we don't since we don't do TCP TLS anymore. Complicated thing. So I don't have any definite answers here, but we'll certainly monitor how, how everyone else is going to do this and uh, make sure that we keep up with the internet as a whole on how to do this. So when will we see HTTP 3 in curl? So first, we're oh yeah, it's a like a good house of cards. So first, we need the specifications to land, which, as I mentioned, might happen this year, maybe not. It'll take a while. Then we will see how the Quick and HTTP three libraries are doing because they certainly need to get out the out of their alpha states because nobody nobody is going to want to ship things when they're as alpha and early as they are right now. We want to see deployed servers, but I think that's the easiest part here because they're very eager, at least the big ones. Google, Facebook, Cloudflare, Fastly, they are going to deploy servers, I think, as soon as they can. So they seem to be possibly the ones that are most uh, on target here. But uh, we also want to see browser support, which has been a bit of a, took a long time, but they're coming there. You can, right now, I think you can actually try out HTTP 3 in all four major browsers, in at least if excluding Safari, all the other three, at least you can, pretty much anyone can try it out because I think the Safari one you need also a bleeding edge Mac OS something and that I don't think everyone has or wants to run. Um, <coughs> and then of course we need to fix it in libcurl and to get libcurl going and shipped in a, for example, in a, in a distro or anything, we need a TLS library situation to be settled because um, we don't want to, People won't, I don't think distros won't, uh, they don't want to ship, for example, Boring SSL because Boring SSL is tricky because Google don't really do proper releases with it because they do it for themselves. So maybe OpenSSL is the only really viable solution and that's not going to have quick until the end of the year at the earliest. Maybe GNU TLS. So there's a lot of uncertainty here. So it's going to take a while and then we can ship curl in a distro with all when, when all of these other uh, different layers are there. So I don't think we can expect any curl in a, in a distro until next year at the earliest actually. So a lot of these are of course moving parts and shaky and everything. So we'll see. <coughs> it just uh, will take a while. But it then it gives us uh, more time to work on it, to polish it and, and uh, really make things solid so by the time we actually get to that distro we should be able to have a fairly well used and, and uh, tested version of curl that might actually get a get a gp3 support that's uh, fairly solid solid and um, you can certainly help and we need your help and join in and it's fun this is the bleeding edge protocol uh, world and we we want to play more uh, and of course, <laughs> in the words of uh, uh, Nick's craft at Twitter, 
currently is the only plane stable enough for HTTP 3 testing. We said this in December 9. Of course, I just included here because it's uh, fun. I'm not sure if it's actually true. Anyway, that is HTTP 3 in curl in 2020. I also wrote this little explainer about HTTP 3 in general and quick. So it's just a free document. It's it's uh, it, that's not a book. It doesn't actually look like this. It's a fake cover. But uh, uh, if you want to get into you know uh, read a document about HTTP 3 and you don't want to see my mug at that um, YouTube video, go read this. And uh, if you're if you have any questions. Of course, always feel free to tweet me or, or email me or anything, but we're also going to have this curl up discussion this Saturday, Saturday, the May 9. And if you're uh, in the curl circles on the mailing list and the curl up uh, wiki page and everything, the details will be there. And uh, well, I'll just uh, see you around and uh, go help us make HP3 and curl better. And uh, I will show up in another thing going forward. See you.